This intermediate conscious skating stride is the absolute foundation for much faster skating, including the double push method, but it should be the aim of every skater because this stride provides the potential for decent speed and good overall fitness, plus a cardiovascular workout. There are still two parts to this skating stride, the push and the glide. They are of equal tempo. The support knee remains in the same deeply bent position throughout the push and the glide. Notice the knee over toe position from the side. It does not change in this position. If you can observe videos of your self-training, you will then be able to consciously refine your focus on feeling and moving specific parts of your body. Being able to accurately observe what is happening with your skating is a valuable skill, which then facilitates the making of conscious decisions based on your increased self and technical awareness from putting in the time doing the exercises. The physics, dynamics and forces acting upon your body when skating are so complex that only by separating things out and practicing them in isolation can we then hope to integrate them fluidly into our stride. Here is where you see if your time spent doing the exercises has had any kind of change or benefit, even if tiny. Applaud even small changes as they are signs of progress and therefore motivation to continue to practice. Skating faster takes time to perfect. I would rather you focused on feeling relaxed and safe while skating faster, rather than aiming only for high speed. Many skaters just push and push and push with powerful strokes, but they do not have the knee bend or control to glide safely and steer their skate. This push-push-push skating is risky because it's often accompanied with a V-ing regroup which produces acceleration. High speeds plus acceleration isn't a good idea for most skaters. The aim of skating faster is now to gain higher speeds and maintain that speed over a length of time, i.e. without accelerating anymore. This is sustainable and safe skating, where you feel in control of everything that's happening, the power of the push, the glide and its edge, the tempo and the regroup. Your training speed limit should be the speed at which you can maintain having your weight on the ball of your foot consistently. At the speed where you notice your weight shift off the ball of your foot, you are now going too fast to train well. If you can't feel your weight on the ball of your support foot as you push to the side, you should slow down. Can you identify the moment when your weight shifts from the ball of the foot to the midfoot? This is very subtle, but you need to become more and more aware of this. Tension in the body from higher speeds results in micro-straightening of the knee, which sends your weight slightly backwards on your skate. You may never have noticed this tension or felt it as such, but with your focus and attention on the balls of your feet, you should become conversant with this language of feeling through the soles of your feet. This is exactly what I do in private lessons and group classes. I constantly and continuously remind my students, can you feel your weight on the balls of your feet? Has the weight moved? Is it obvious? Can you make it heavier on the ball of the foot so it is more obvious? Imagine I'm asking you these questions while you're skating and I'm whispering them in your ears.